Here we are. What's up, guys? Sup, kid. Sup, kid. So, just ground this guy down. All right? That's all good. That's all gravy. She's beautiful. Put it in the sun so we can see. She looks like a new file. Except the outsides are slick to hit a striker. Not perfectly slick, but pretty slick. This still has nice bite on it, so you can use it as a proper file in the woods. I don't like it when this is, when, you know, someone makes a, file, a striker out of a file and, you know, this is ground down. There's no point to that. So it's a multi-purpose tool. So what we're going to do, briefly, put some birch bark here. Haven't lit a fire in a while, so I'm like, you know what? Let's rip a little fire since I'm not out in the woods. It's in the backyard. And, uh, yeah. Why not, right? Might as well. So. No birch bark. Hopefully that's in frame. It's a bit better. Just ripping up a couple small pieces of birch bark here. Literally... Just a couple small tiny pieces. Just into strips. I see I find that strips work better. Thicker bits don't really uh catch as quick. I mean they do, but for a small little tiny midget file like this, like the thing's probably I don't know, nine inches in circumference is the old fire bag. Nice wax canvas. Um, so I'm going to use this first and then make a comparison to show you guys, you know, how a steel from $30 steel from the store works. Yes, this was 30 bucks with like a, a little chunk of flint and a cool case. Um, but that's worth it. I wanted a Pathfinder. I wanted, you know, I have a couple pieces of Pathfinder gear, bush pot, blah, 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 patches, uh, you know, morale patches, stuff like that. But I wanted this guy. I've been wanting this guy for ages. So anyways... This one I made still has nice bite to it. This one I just ground down. You guys can see in you know previous video. I used my grinder and cutting wheel to initially cut it. And then grinders just to I think the flap disc works the best to just take the initial off of it. Anyways, let's get this rocking. So just chunked up a little bit of fat wood. So I got fat wood. I have a couple of pieces of birch bark on top. So the birch bark will go up before the fat wood does. And we're gonna go old school. And go flint and steel, man. Flint and steel. Actually, we still got a couple of pieces there. And I cut these guys just to fit in my Altoid tin, which is kind of handy. Um, I have what else is in here? Oh, I believe this. These are lamp wicks that I've knocked down and shod. And here is, this is neat. This is a piece of char I found, sorry, a piece of flint I found uh, local. And it works, the balls. Let me get this guy out of my hand. It absolutely works, the balls, if I can get a good edge. Hopefully those sparks are picking up. Man, it's windy out today. But yeah, this thing works in nuts. And uh, I looked it up on some rock finder things, but I wasn't 100% what it was. And I believe it said it was some type of quartzite. So we're literally using one little chunk, and you can see how bloody windy it is out today. Using one chunk. And I'm going to use that to ignite my fatwood, fatwood to cha, uh, sorry, birch bark to fatwood. Back, pop him here, and then who knows? Maybe we'll do like a couple little fires. Yes, I have my my cool Viking turn shoes on because it's Sunday and uh, it's just a nice it's a nice day to uh, walk around with comfy shit on your feet. So. Without further ado, I'm going to get a chunk of uh, flint. I'm going to use this guy, Georgetown Blue. And a lot of people put it on top. I prefer putting it on the bottom. 
literally with this lightning chop actually let me expose an edge it seems like if you expose edges it works better rather than say the folded side and people that that buy this from me on my Etsy store I tell them straight out I was like listen man this catches one good spark and that's all you need so let me promote my my gear as it's actually not a good idea to have this open because there is jar in there. Let me move that to the side just a smidge. One good piece of char. That's all you need. It should. Oh, that one just hit, but. Seems like it went out a tad. Uh, it didn't go out, it just it got bounced off. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. But we have ignition. Once I finally found a nice sharp edge of my my flint. And the decent nice thing about this is you don't have to rush, man. You don't have to rush. You can absolutely take your time. And sometimes you can just touch it right to the Touch it right to the birch bark and uh, oh man, it just goes up like a rape tape. So let me throw a couple small guys and nurse that. Hopefully you guys are getting this in frame. jump is yeah hope this kicks off for you guys I didn't have any tinder that was dumb I should have had tinder ready stand by all right let's give that another go This was literally something I pulled out of the mower. And I'm like, yep, that could be decent tinder. So let's do it right this time. This is actually still going, but. I don't know if you guys can see that still red in there. I'm gonna pop another one on. Let's see if we can't. Won't make me a liar out of my own gear. tell you as soon as this stuff goes up it's like fire in the hole which is cool that's actually a really big chunk I don't need I don't need all that I can rip that down and that's still I can still see a freaking ember in there <laughs> yeah right there it just uh, I get the birch back up very good it was smoldering for a minute numero dos And I'll use, so I just use this one. As you can see, this works just great. I'm going to use the one I did about mm, a month ago. Try to keep it in frame. Still see this stuff smoking, smoldering from before. I've got a good wind coming. It doesn't blow everything everywhere. Oh, see it smoking. It's still rocking, but I didn't have proper tinder in there. And having no good tinder or no tinder at all <clears throat> is not a good idea. Tinder, then your fire starters, then fatwood if possible, birch bark. All the good stuff, all the accelerants. 
Here we go. We'll cut just the tip. I mean, I say it's one strike, and in numerous situations, scenarios, it is. But, you know, two or three, three or four. Depends how good your steel is and stuff, you know? So, enough talk. Let me get this rocking. Let's see if I can finally get a little fire out of this bugger. small guys on this birch box this is stuff I carved from my Koopsa this may not go up but primarily I was just looking to see if I could get this fight up for you guys so I can try a couple couple different tinders uh, sorry a couple different uh, steels a couple different ways to uh, pro procure a fire with steels for you guys so Yeah, that's what I was shooting for. I mean, hopefully this goes up just a little. <coughs> so, with my shield that I made last year sometime, I wound up decorating it a bit. Um, I have to put another saying or more runes through here. But we did that so far, so... I think it looks kind of cool. I may outline that black and silver. That one out. My, that wind actually may, may keep it up with a good huff and puff. Because there's already some really good coals in there. I can just see from the fat wood. We're literally not trying to make a fire. I was just trying to spark something up here. But uh, we also did the flip side. And the flip side looks pretty darn cool. So I had a raven there. And I added another one. So now we have two proper ravens. On the opposite side of my shield, which looks pretty rad. No bird talking there it is. All right. Now that we got that done, let's let's um let's show you guys. Uh, should I show you ferro rod techniques? Jeez, I haven't worked. I don't think I've like demonstrated on camera ferro rod ever. All right, hold on. Normally just a flint and steel type of dude, but yes, I do use a ferro rod and an expert striker. I mean, this striker is literally second to none. I don't know how that just worked. I think it went up on its own. I said there was a good bed of coals down there, but this striker um, I actually have for sale. I haven't posted on my Etsy channel yet, but they are unbelievable. Unbelievable. They just take gobs. Off the ferro rods, man. Gobs, gobs, gobs. Okay, let me do it from back here. It's an odd angle over the camera. Magnesium, baby. Burns it over 5,000 degrees. Alright, so let's do... Let's wipe this out. Let's start from... Start from new... I don't have a laptop. I don't have all types of fancy stuff that I can edit videos. So, you know, you guys are going to just have to take what you get with me, man. I don't have all that fancy stuff. So, I will have a little bit more. Um, 
that wood. There's the other steels. So yeah, this, this thing came out decent. It was nice. It was a 12, 12 inch long, uh, say quarter inch. Uh, Nicholson file. We'll just pop these guys in here. Yeah, I think the fire stick, uh, feather stick technique works out just, just fine. Rather than having a million, a million little curls everywhere. I prefer the fire feather stick technique. I always call it a fire stick feather stick technique. I prefer it very much so. And boy, isn't that some nice fat wood. Guys, see that? Oh, I know you can smell it too, man. That is just bacony all throughout here. Whew, that's the good stuff. With my fire kits I sell, my, my lightning char I sell on Etsy, which is... In town bushcraft forward slash shop for uh, etsy.com. I kick in two pieces of flint, about nickel size, so I call it call it about this size, size of a nickel, with 13 pieces of four by four. So no little Altoid tin, man. It's a four inch by four inch. 13 of them slab of cha that just, oh my gosh, uh, it, it can last people years. A whole tin will last you years unless you fire three times a day, which most people don't, but, you know, I think that should be enough. Let's see, 17 minutes? Yeah, so far so good. All right, rip up a little birch block. And we'll go ferro rod this time. On a decent base, that's kind of imperative to have a decent base. But I remember there was this guy, Nathan something. Nathan 4071, I think. He had a challenge back in the day to see who could throw a ferro rod spark the furthest. And I wound up entering, and I, I think I did like eight or nine feet or something. It was pretty cool. I think some guy won like 14 feet, but it was rad in any rate. All right, fluff up some more tinder. Like I said, this is stuff. These are just weeds. And crap, I pulled out of the underside blade on the mower. It's like, I might be a bit of a hoarder. I might be a bit of a pack rat because I don't throw anything away, man. When it's wood related, I don't. All right. Enough yap, more zap. So, using a half by six ferro rod, which I have a dope one of these on Etsy. It's a shamrock handle. Let me grab it real quick. have it wrapped in painters tape right now but this is a really nice antler handle a uh, white tailed deer antler that I just put a shamrock in and my trademark scars and bars but that's a half inch by six ferro rod under there So, if anybody's interested, I believe it's on for 45 bucks. It just feels so good in the hand. The way I have it, that it sits. I mean, it's super nice. It's it's just a really, really nice ferro rod. If anybody's interested. All right. Back to the good stuff. I didn't put char in there, did I? Nope, I didn't even use damn char. <laughs> it would have went up without the char. 
just pop a little funky piece of char in there for kicks, for laughs, shits and gigs. There we go, that's ignited. Now, let's see what happens. We'll have to breathe it to life, maybe, we'll see. Breathe a little life into it. It's kind of sitting on the ground. Hopefully that kicks off decently. But the cha, that cha is sitting on the ground. Let's see if I can just hit it with the ferro rod. Hit that birch block nice. Give a couple more. And when you get stuck getting ridges on your ferro rod, there we go. Stuck getting ridges on your ferro rod, you literally just take a file to it. And it will get all those grooves off. I mean, shit, you can even strike with these. That's how versatile these are, not just for flint and steel. So inside of my pack, I sell 13 pieces of char, two nickel-sized pieces of Georgetown Blue or Keokuk Flint, um, a small or a medium or a large size, same, same thickness, um, striker, and what else? Three pieces of fat wood, so it's literally a kit. And I think it's on there for like 18, 20 bucks, something like that. It's literally everything you need for a fire kit. And uh, I'm just excited that they have been selling as well as they have. I'm, I'm really excited. Sorry, it went up. This isn't a fire to maintain. This is just a experimental fire to show you guys. That 22 minutes, probably gonna kill it. Just wanted to give you guys a little something. I may put music in the background. I may not. I don't know. But uh, these are on deck. These are on deck. I mean, I can sell them singularly. Whatever you guys need. Absolutely, your call, man. But got them. Got my lightning town. Uh, my lightning strike cha. Uh, in town bushcraft it's just it's exceptional stuff it it literally speaks for itself and this is a half of a piece i said i sold actually this is a quarter of a piece i sell oh, let me get it real quick so i can bust out a full So this is a full set. I'm glad none of this blew away. Just put all the heavy stuff on the top. It's at least one bright thing I did today. Give me a second, guys, and I will be right with you. So this is a tin it comes in. It comes in one of these tins. It's like four and a half by uh, three quarters of an inch, I believe. Super light, but what's in here, <coughs> and this is the fun part, is three pieces of fat wood, two nickel size, this is Keokuk, this is, uh, I think, rose quartz, and these are the size these are the sizes of, set this down just here. These are the sizes, four inch by four inch. So you can see on my hand, if the wind doesn't blow it all away, how big they are. They are 
massive and there's 13 pieces in each one. Some of them might have a funny off cut like that, but it's just, you know, it is what it is. It looks like a, a corporal patch. <laughs> Most of them are square though. Most of them are, are straight up and square and it's not cotton, it's not denim. It's, uh, it's a family, you know, family recipe that has been passed down from ancestors, great, great, great grandparents to my great grandparents, great grandparents to my grandparents to so on. These are what you want to hit. If you can hit these when you're striking, oh man, you're in business. But yeah, it's all really, really nice stuff. You can cut these up and quarter them. So you whack it in half, whack it in half again, and that size will fit in your Altoids tin if you decide to carry around one of these guys, which I do. I carry around my tins also, but in my fire kit, uh, my wax canvas is just not big enough to accept uh, my tins. I'm on the verge of making some canvas, uh, is it canvas? Yeah, I think it's canvas. Um, some canvas fire bags, fire pouches that you can put your gear in that um, will accept my, actually, you know what? I, I believe it does. I think it does fit. Let me get all my crap out of here for a second. I have a ton of stuff in here. I have leather for napping. I have bigger chunks of flint. You know, even